QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Import bank transactions into QuickBooks. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our bank feed test file. In prior presentations, we downloaded our banking information from our online bank. Now we want to put that information or get that information into our QuickBooks file. There's a couple ways to do that. First, let's take a look at what we downloaded here. So this is the QuickBooks program. Notice that here we have the actual data file that we are working in. So this is the actual data file, the QBW file. This is the actual program over here. And then we have this QBO file, which doesn't stand for QuickBooks Online here, but rather is the file type extension that is given to the data file for the bank feed information that we downloaded directly from our bank. So now we want to get this stuff into QuickBooks. Now, as we do that, note, remember that when it goes into QuickBooks, it's not going to populate to the financial statement. It's not going to change the balance sheet and income statement yet. It's going to go in what I call bank feed limbo. And then we're going to have to approve it out of limbo. So it'll then go and do what it needs to do to, to the bank statements at that point in time. Our financial statements, I, I mean, meaning the balance sheet and income statement and supporting reports. So there's a couple ways we can do this. So I'll just go over a few ways that you can see this. Uh, if you go to the, the QuickBooks, if you open up the file, you could go to the banking dropdown, you could go to bank feeds, and you, could, and you can use this import web connect. It, you also will see it found by people going to, or another way you can get to the same areas. You can go to the file tab, utilities, and then you can import, import here, and you got this web connect. They actually suggest just double clicking on it. And so I'm going to do that because that's what's in the actual QuickBooks instructions generally is to double click on. It. I'm actually going to close the whole QuickBooks program here. So the QuickBooks program is now closed. Now I do recommend having the, the program or the company file that you want to be importing in as the last file that you had open when you closed the QuickBooks program if you're going to do it in this format. And now I'm going to double click on the QBO file and let it just run. It'll open up QuickBooks and then run. Now note, again, I'm not clicking on the, on the QuickBooks program, which looks very similar icon. I'm not clicking, clicking on the data file, which is the QBW file, the actual data file. We're, kick, we're clicking on the, the QBO file, which is the file extension for the item that we got from the bank, which basically just includes the bank feed type of transaction. So I'm simply going to have everything closed and then double click on the QBO file. So it's opening up QuickBooks for me. So that automatically basically opens up the QuickBooks file. It's opening up the last, trans, the, last, uh, uh, the last file we had open, which was that bank feeds test file. And then we've got our import wizard here, which says QuickBooks has received new uh, transaction data. Please indicate whether you want to import this data now or save the file for import later. Now, generally we're gonna say, I wanna import it now. The other option, save transaction to a file. Uh, you will ask for a file neighbor or always give me the option to save in the file when I download. So I'm going to keep it here. I'm going to say, okay. Next, we have our information here, the financial institution, the account type, the account number. QuickBooks does not have an online account to handle these transactions. Please make a selection below. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to create a new QuickBooks account in order to do that. And then I'm going to say, continue. Then it says your web connection data has been successfully read into QuickBooks. You can view the download data in BankFeed's center by selecting your financial institution. So I'm going to say OK. So then we get a pop up that says advanced bank feeds, a faster and improved way to categorize your bank data, create uh, enhanced rules and uh, transactions so you can learn more here. I'm going to close this out right now. And then notice I got this ribbon that shows up at the top from time to time. So whenever I get that, I usually go to the view drop down up top and I go to the top ribbon. So I put the ribbon up top and then I put it back down to the left where I want it to go. And so there we have it. Now, if you wanted to go back in here uh, from the home tab now. So if I go to the home tab, I'm going to go to the view window and open windows list, which I typically like to see. Then I can go to the banking drop down and we can go then to the bank feeds. And now we have the bank feeds center rather than just simply the set up bank feeds, which is the default. If you have no bank feed center, we now have a bank feed center because we've imported these bank feed transactions. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to skip this item here. And then we're in our banking uh, information. So we got the banking information up on the left. Now, note here, you have this whole big blank space down here. I, I really like to look at this because it's different than, than the prior year. 
but they got a lot of wasted space up top. And when I when I change the view of my screen to be fairly large, then I don't get to see many transactions at one time. So so you might want to change the size of your view screen. You have to do that basically on the desktop. So I'll probably be switching back and forth between the view size. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to uh, the the display settings, display settings. And this is where you can change basically how how large your screen is. I'm, I have a larger screen than I normally would so that I can have the dis display. So I'm currently at 150. So I'm going to go down to 125 now and see what it looks like. So I'm going to say, okay, let's check it out at 125. Now I can see a few more transactions. It's still a larger display than, I, than they're recommending, which is 100. So if you go down to your normal display, it, you'll probably have a fair number of transactions down here uh, below. We'll get into sorting these later, but right now I just want to note that these transactions are not in the financials yet. This is what I would call limbo. This is bank feed limbo at this point, meaning they're not populating the financial statements. If I go to the reports up top and I go to the company and financial, look at like the profit and loss report from uh, 010120 to 123120, there's no data there. So we still need to add some information in order to get it from the bank feeds into the system and that will include at least the account information because all it knows right now is that we have an increase and a decrease to the checking account and whatever information was given at that increase and decrease in including the date that the transaction happened at least the date that it hit the bank on and then whatever information we might have for the customer and vendor related to it now we got to take that information and populate our our books with it by assigning the proper accounts to it and when we assign the proper accounts we'll, we will also be using the actual forms quickbooks will be basically assigning a form meaning if i assign some kind of decrease quick, quick quickbooks will typically assign a check type form to it so when we drill back down on it it'll basically be a form type format so we'll start to get into that what that looks like in future presentations